Hello, everyone. This is the first kind of episode thing I'm doing. Just looking into some really cool people that I've had the pleasure to know. Talk about some stuff that I want to talk about more than anything. Things that interest me. Um, and the first person I've got with me is my good mate, Rich. But I want him to explain himself because <laughs> if I try and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain him as my mate. And he is a really intelligent guy. So Rich, please tell everyone. Uh, my name is Richard Grannon. Um, I am not a bodybuilder. <laughs> my background is mainly uh, uh, psychology, studied psychology down at Aston. Uh, the idea was uh, I was trying to join the army and get into intelligence and stuff, but that's that's a, that's another story for another day. Um, and over the years, while I was waiting to, to join the army as an off officer, I started working doing admin work in uh, Liverpool. I was just picking up admin work and I happened to get sat on a desk with uh, two nightclub bouncers in Liverpool and they were into bodybuilding. And so my introduction to bodybuilding was uh, sat chatting to Barry and Dave. And <laughs> they both ended up in Nick. This is, this is bodybuilding. <laughs> they both ended up in Nick. Um, Barry and Dave, if you're out there, I miss those times. We would just chat shit all day and do no work. And I was young and impressionable. They were a very naughty influence on me. They, they gave me my first shot of testosterone, <laughs> my first line. <laughs> oh no. Good scout storming. Um, and they they found out, obviously I was like, I was 21. I was a skinny little chappy. And um, they found out I was into martial arts. I was a big nerd for martial arts. I mean, we've discussed this before. So I feel lucky in a way in that I can go into like strength training and bodybuilding and just enjoy it as a perpetual uh, novice, which I, I really enjoy. I have, I have no opinions. I know nothing. I just, whatever people say, I'll just take on and have a think about. Um, I'm, I'm a martial arts nerd. So with them, they'd be like, oh, because they'd, they'd be doing the door at the weekends. And they'd be like, oh, martial arts is shite. And I'd be like, oh, why do you think that? And we'd have a chat. And then I'd show them <laughs> some stuff in the coffee room. They'd be like, fucking hell, lad, that's lethal, that. <laughs> so we'd go to the gym on a Saturday and they just wanted to know the nastiest shit possible. <laughs> like, <But> yeah. <laughs> just how do you, like, if I'm taking somebody out like this, how do I hurt them? And I'd be like, well, you can rub the nerve here <laughs> and you can gouge them there. Um, hypothetically, Rich, hypothetically, 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 like, as long as it's not caught on camera, <laughs> always use reasonable force. Um, and then they were like, well, well do, you, do you want to do the door? And I was like, oh no, fucking hell. I mean, I was a, a private school educated, uh, the school was putting me forward, trying to get me into Oxford and Cambridge. And I was like, I can't, I'd like, nah, I'm not, I'm not that way inclined. <laughs> and they're like, no, you should go on the door, but you need a bigger head. They said my head was too skinny. <laughs> we're stepping into bodybuilding now, aren't we? We're, spe <laughs> we're stepping this into is, dysmorphia. This is, this is how we know we're stepping into dysmorphia. And like, if you're just a bit bigger, you'd be okay. <laughs> so... I started working on the door in Liverpool. Uh, as, as I say, I was still, uh, for various reasons, I was a potential, potential officer candidate for the, the King's Regiment. Um, I had like a sponsoring captain here in Liverpool, but I'd had an incident where I'd got glassed in a fight in Chester. I got glassed in, in the eye and I was a bit, my confidence was shook. So I needed a year out. And during this year, Liverpool got hold of me. <laughs> and then I got into all the ways I was just drawn wow. into that whole, whole world. Um, but when I was on the door, what I found, I wasn't working with them. I was working for a uh, capital security, which is the Lynch's old firm when I started. And because I was small, uh, people were starting fights with me and then I'd have to physically sort of not prove myself, but if I like some skinny little sad says, lad, you need to get out. And I've got an accent from the Wirral. I'm not like, hey, lad, you need to fucking go here, yeah. kids. I would be like, excuse me, gentlemen, could you please leave? You would have been the first to pick on, but the worst one out of all of them. And probably that, that, to was, pick that on. was the weird thing. And that's <laughs> and that's how um, you, I, I gained I gained respect because it was, I must have been, I don't know what, maybe I was like 70 kilos. I'm not tall. Um, and for reference, you're, you're at least 100 now. Yeah, yeah. About a walk around, probably between 95 and 100 now. Um, and uh, over the years, so you're talking about body dysmorphia, I did learn that if you are small and you present in that way, you, you do just have to do more work because, you know, the average lad who starts a fight in a club is not, certainly back when I was doing it in like 2005, they weren't MMA fighters, they were just bellends. 
who'd had too much Stella. Like, I reckon I can take you. And then you'd be like, okay, square go and fill them in. And okay, that's great. And the lads are like, oh, well done. Police don't like it. So I got, I never got arrested, but I got, because I can talk to the police, like, but I got multiple warnings um, and I had police in the family. One of the police in the family works in intelligence. And he was like, listen, you either, you should stop, really stop all this, go back to, to the army. But I quite liked the life. I was quite, I was quite enjoying it. And uh, yeah, go on. And I think I would like to note there, and it does touch on what we're going to talk about today mm. immediately. Yes. Your physical appearance, yes. whether people like it or not, yes. will sometimes dictate whether you are a victim of maybe certain things like 100%. that. 100%. And it leads into how often, or was your goal to get bigger purely based on people will leave me alone, I'll it, have less work to do? It was essentially that. So the first, uh, I switched, I got, I got asked for, um, cause I had, uh, you're a young lad and you're, you're skinny. So you're not, you're not, they don't really use you as a front door man, but I did, as I was told, my background was martial arts and private school. If somebody's older than you and they're higher up in the, in the hierarchy, you just do as they say. Mm. So they were using me, they put me on the life cafe when it was a comedy club and they were using me on the cloakroom. Then they, they, that was capital run. Then there was a firm that was set up to, to handle the living room which was the place to be back in the day. And they were like, we want that lad, but he's a cloakroom lad. And then it literally affected my money and my status in the team to go on a course of test and D-ball. And in, I was talking to, to an ex-girlfriend about, about this the other day and she was like, does it really work? I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I grew to the point where people who'd not seen, it was in two months, I was a kid, full of nat natural testosterone. Yeah. And people look at me going, what the fuck have you done in two months? Yeah, this is the layer, isn't it? Yeah. And that's that's exactly what I want to touch on because funnily enough for everybody watching, you were probably the perfect doorman, mm. level-headed, intelligent, yeah. reasonable. Yeah. You were athletic, probably mm. fit. Mm. Yet, because you didn't have the physicality. I had to work a lot. That's all that was necessary. I had to, I, I, and, and when I say work, I've lived this experience where you're at one size and you say to somebody, come on, mate, that's enough now, you're gonna have to go. And then you're at another size and you say exactly the same thing in exactly the same way and you're getting a very different response. So if in a, and, and it's it's bad door work if you're punching people, it, you know, all jokes, yeah, it's yeah. not good. If you end up having to wrestle around, because even if you're, if you're smaller, but you can fight, if the guy's like 120 kilograms, I've got to climb up his back and choke him. Yeah. In front of people, he falls over, glasses are going everywhere, women yeah. are screaming. Whereas you you show up at 10 kilos heavier and they do a calculation in their drunk fucking Neanderthal minds and they go, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll just do as he says. And I was like, well, I'm now, I'm now front of door. I eventually became the head doorman at super young. I was 25 when they made me the head doorman on the living wow. room. Nicest club in town, became the head doorman. And if I'd not been juicing... I wouldn't have, I just wouldn't it's, have got It's a there. fascinating aspect I see yeah. all the time on Instagram. And I love martial arts, as mm. you know, but like I see all these MMA reels of MMA fighters going, oh, you can bench 180 kilo. Well, look at me. And then they do like a big spin kick. Yeah. Because they hate this idea that the people that look tough are the muscular ones. Yes. When in reality, it's just a survival instinct, isn't it? If you, like you said, you do the calculation. Okay. In, yeah. in the nature, yeah. the bigger animal wins usually. A hundred percent. And it's not. It's not for people who are educated in bodybuilding and martial arts to make these calculations because you're not the one who's going to start a fight because yeah. you're worried about tearing your pec, you're worried about <laughs> your, your body and you, you don't you don't want to fight. It's bellends who are thick, um, who are just like, well, I don't know, they just, they, they watch Scarface at home, snorted a couple of lines, <laughs> had three pints of Stella and they're out flexing yeah. and they think they can have a go. And if they see a bigger animal, as you just said, they're like, oh no. But if he's small and skinny, we're like, yeah, we can, we'll fill this Which guy Which is the in. wrong logic, by the way, as we know. Totally the wrong logic. You know, logic. weight categories do exist in combat, but 90% of the time, the trained individual is going to destroy the untrained, right? And I think, you know, without, because it's, it's it, there are these like long-term debates that go on for years in bodybuilding. There's long-term debates that go on in martial arts. There's weight categories that exist in competitive combat and they should and they must. Yeah. But when you're talking about street fighting and people think like, well, the cage is there, but street fighting, you could die. So it's like a higher level yeah. of fighting. It's a lower level of fighting. You can die. Yeah. So the risk is greater because you could get stabbed. You could get stomped on. There's no referee. 
But the people I was scrapping with were not fighters. And even yeah. if they were, they were pissed. Yeah, yeah. You can sling them, <laughs> sling them round. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I had fights with MMA fighters and you think, oh, that's very impressive. There was a lad in, um, I used to do door work in New Zealand. And I'll tell this story because I, 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 it just, it just uh, concretizes what we're talking about. This guy looked like an MMA fighter. So he's ripped, tattoos, Kiwi lad, shaved head. And I had sparred with him multiple times. It was called Shuriken MMA. I don't know if it still exists. It was uh, run by two South African fellas. Um, and we'd sparred and we grappled. And he could beat me. His cardio was better. Technically, he was better. One night, he fronts me because I'd had something with his mate's girlfriend. And he fronted me. But he was pissed and he was high on party pills. I just picked him up and threw him over a wall. <laughs> there you go. It's funny, it's funny you say that. I had a mate, and I won't name the fighter, but there is a high-profile UFC fighter right now from Liverpool. Mm. And he had a fight with my mate. Oh yeah, and and I've seen the CCTV, or I wouldn't say it. Yeah, and it. I mean, he was he was a lot younger at the time before he went away yeah. to a different country to train. But they're just rolling around on the floor. Yeah, and this guy is he's, he's fought in the UFC in yeah. Las Vegas, and he's yeah. rolling around on the floor. Yeah, both of them end up getting trouble with the police. But it's yeah. like like you said, as soon as alcohol's involved, it's it's a different thing. And I think like so so I, I taught self defense. I, uh, part of my story is like when I was doing door work, and then I wanted to come off the door. I, I start, I wanted an online business and I started teaching self-defense and some people know me from that. It was called streetfightsecrets.com and it became this like globally recognized brand because I was incorporating psychology and self-defense. And I don't want to bait the argument. I'm not saying MMA is shit and if you just eye gouge somebody or headbutt them, it finishes. That's, that's not true. But MMA and street are different things. Yeah. The body only moves in one way. MMA has shown us there's an ergonomically efficient way to do violence because the human body, you've got one head, two arms and two legs. It's not a thousand different styles. There's mm. one. All true. But if you're a trained fighter, what you're mentally conditioned to, and I trained like MMA fighters to be able to handle self-defense situations, what you're trained to and your body is conditioned to, if it's mats and it's well lit and you're barefoot and you're in your shorts and you've got your gloves on and your gum shield in, that's a very different yeah. feeling to three lads fronting you. Two of them don't really want it, but this fucker in front of you does, and he's not gone for you yet. He's just leaning into you, and the club is banging, and your girlfriend's yeah. there, and he's saying, do you want to fucking... And, and, and it's so much confusion. You can freeze, you can fuck up, you can make the wrong decisions. It's not that they're not fit, they're strong, they can fight. But in a different context, there's a shock factor that, that, can, that can take place. So this was all... At that time, the kind of stuff I was trying to deconstruct and work with to help people. But bringing it back to the point, I've lived the experience of having more money and more status through popping pills and sticking a needle in my arm. So and anabolic it, steroids literally correlated to you having an easier time at work. 100%. More respect. And it, it leads nicely into, like you said about MMA, because I talk about this a lot. It's a sport and I yeah. love yeah. MMA as a sport, yeah. but it is a sport. Yeah. There's a referee, there's rules. Yeah. You know your opponent 12 weeks in advance. You can train for them. You yeah. can predict things. Like you said, the adrenaline dump and hormones yeah. that are flowing through your body in a situation like on the streets. Yeah. It's it's a different world entirely, isn't it's, it? It's a different world. And I have sympathy for people. There will be like boxers, wrestlers, jujitsu guys, MMA guys out there who've been filled in. I mean, I was filled in a couple BJ of years. BJ Penn got filled in and he was he? considered one of the goats of MMA, wasn't he? Dropped I, on the street in Hawaii, just in a, in a street fight, had a little drink. And like you said, someone's just hit him. And it, it maybe wasn't ready. Maybe he wasn't taking it seriously enough. I got filled in in 2021. I got my face all lumped up by like these little skinny Italian kids. Cause it was a beach party in Ibiza. I said something that I thought was funny. They took offense to it. <laughs> but for the first five seconds of them grabbing me and you know, this thing that people who can't fight do, they'll yeah. grab me. Yeah. I was laughing because I was high and I was like, this will be all right. And then I was like, I just heard something click in my jaw. <laughs> Like, you, better you better cover up or something. This is real, Rich. This this is, is, I was like, ha ha, you're a bunch of little skinny dickheads and I'm massive. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Wait, I just back up. Um, and I did not do- It's like I, fighting with your little brother or something, honestly, isn't it? You think your eyes and, are all right. And then, and, then, and then stopping them was me just like batting away. But um, you can, you can mi I misjudged. Yeah. Because if you're, if you're on alcohol and you're on, you're on other stuff- you're in an altered state of consciousness. You're not thinking about your safety. You're not thinking about, you've got to be a nerd. Like you've got to, uh, uh, we've discussed this in, in bodybuilding. You've got to be a nerd. You've got to measure everything. In the security world, the best security is you're a nerd. 
You're, ta- you're taking time. You're following standard operational procedures. I would always say to the lads who worked for me when I've, when I've run doors, they'd be like, oh, when we finish, can we stay for a drink? And I'd be like, no, you cannot uh, have one mouthful of alcohol and stand there and be of use to me. One drop. Because I've, I've lived it myself. So there's, we're, we're getting to the end of the night in the Mosquito on Dale Street. And like, there's people in there who are gold card members and they've known you for a couple of years. And they're like, go on, have a bit of vodka Red Bull. Have a bit. Literally, I've had one mouthful of alcohol and found myself in the fire exit filling somebody in yeah. where before I probably wouldn't have even had to touch them. I could have just said something and it would have calmed down or they would have left or whatever. So even just one drop, I'd be like, you're now... I need to be in nerd security mode. I have to be lo- looking at the exits. I have to follow standard operational procedures. I have to keep my ego in control. I'm watching my own ego. And like somebody does something and it, the ego ju- fucking yeah. bites his ear off. No, no, darling. <laughs> we don't do that because we're here as customer services representatives. We're here to keep people safe. Massively interesting that you've uh, even mentioned that because I've not considered it. It's not something yeah. I've done. Yeah. And when you look at stuff like that, you don't, I mean, Someone once told me everything's a lot more complicated than you think. Yes. And that sounds like an example there where yeah. it is more yeah. technical. There is more brains involved than just, I am big man on door. Don't come in, you know. <sighs> and, and there are lads who do it that way, but they're, they're, they're not. They're probably the worst clubs, I imagine, just and, because of the way it's run. And, and, and it's, that's not, to me, that's not door work. That's easy. If you said to me, show up tonight and I've got mates who run doors and they occasionally ask me, I'm still bad. Then they'll say, come along. And if the whole thing was, I'm going to stand there sipping a Red Bull slouched and I'll do something when it goes off. <laughs> is that what, that's a work. Yeah. It's that's reactionary. T- isn't it? That's totally reactionary. I'm moderating my state and my attitude because it's, it's human interaction. It's still communication. This kid This girl, this guy, this wannabe gangster, he may make a decision for violence or not based on whether I say to him, listen, you fucking bellend, don't throw your champagne over there. Don't fucking do that again. We're going to throw you out. And I was watching lads do that versus me going, listen, mate, I know you're having a good night and it's your champagne and I know it's expensive. (laughs) But if you do that, other drunk people are going to slip on it, mate. Could you, and and yeah, sound, done. So one thing could have been a fight with six fellas who are, they're listening to hip hop. They think they're fucking 50 cents. And the other thing is a guy just going, yeah, 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 bruv. You know, don't, don't worry about it. It's sound. We won't do it again. would respect this. A little bit. A little uh, bit. Do you think, and again, this is going to tie in nicely to the next questions to be fair, but again, your size, mm. your intim- how intimidating you was as a person mm. played into that massively, doesn't it? It, it did. And also, I mean, I, I, I went the, the path of the Sith for a while. I, I really went dark. So, so I was teaching, I was trying to reverse engineer MK Ultra tactics. That is, that is dark. dark. Yeah. Wow. Real dark. And, and um, <laughs> so I reverse engineered MK Ultra tactics. I got hold of the original Project Jedi files. Do you remember is that what that they called it? Project Jedi is a real thing and I have the files. It's in, it's in a loft somewhere. I won't say where. Yeah. But I got it because Anthony Robbins worked on it. Do you know the, uh, the he's a big motivation. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 1996, I'm doing psychology and I want to do my dissertation on MK Ultra and brainwashing. I call the, because it's payphones in 1996, <laughs> call the Anthony Robbins Foundation, say, hello, I'm a student from the United Kingdom. Can I please have the files? And uh, some nice lady on the desk was like, oh, sweet, you have a British accent. Oh, that's really cute. What's your address, honey? We'll photocopy it. They photocopied the Project Jedi files that Anthony Robbins had and sent them to me. No way. So I I took what they, Project Jedi, for people who don't know, was like, uh, you need to read the men, that, the men who stare yeah, at goats. Forget bodybuilding, let's go into Project Jedi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> the men who stare at goats. So it's it was a black budget um operation to try and literally to try and create super soldiers. God bless the Americans. Only they could do that. God bless America. Including making soldiers psychic. And they got this because- This was a US government sanctioned- Yep. Yep. It's all out there. This isn't conspiracy theory. This is, this is all hundred percent factual. The guys are involved being interviewed. It was lunacy. Yeah. And they wasted a ton of money, but they did that because they knew the Russians were doing it. So they wanted soldiers with psychic powers who could remote view where the enemy was and, and could kill the enemy with psychic powers on the battlefield. I've trained with Russians uh, in Sistema, people who know, know the names, Mikhail Ryabko and um, Vladimir Vasiliev. I trained with them a number of times. They believe they can do all this. It's, it's nonsense. 
It's nonsense. It's not real. Don't get trapped in this world. They believe they have like some sort of ability to. In- yeah. Wow. Yeah. We're- and they were probably brainwashed. They're brainwashed, and and it's it's religious. It's Eastern Orthodox, but an, a mystical form of Eastern wow. Orthodoxy. So they're literally calling on the power of gods to infiltrate their body when they throw a punt. It's well, if we look at MMA, it's hard to beat dudes like that, whether it's right or wrong. Well, right? the thing is, there there is, and this is what I was exploring. <clears throat> I was I was like, okay, you don't have psychic powers as such, but if you have belief in yourself. Yeah. And it's a powerful, zealot belief that makes you a, 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 a more of a dangerous enemy. 100%. Because you're not going to fold. You're like, no, I am Mujahideen. I'm on the mission from God. I'm yeah. going to... So there's a level of commitment that you can model in neuro-linguistic pro- programming, programming terms and then put it into uh, courses. So there was two courses I made called... One was called Super States, and the other one was called uh, Psychology of Violence. And this was just nasty stuff. Just basically the easiest way to incapacitate people. Just with no rules, no. It, it was even beyond that. So, so with MK Ultra, the part of MK Ultra that goes over into Project Jedi is how do you make the perfect Manchurian candidate, or how do you make the perfect soldier? You're civilized. I'm civilized. If somebody in the street walks up to me and touches my face, it's not normal, and I'm offended. The people that policemen and soldiers are fighting against are not civilized. Mm-hmm. They'll happily kill men, women, children, mutilate, torture. How does it, so the, the problem is how do you get civilized people with a morality and values who want to go home to their families to fight effectively against nasty people without turning the civilized people yeah. dark? So MK Ultra's idea was you create trauma in the person and you split the personality and then you train that split to do the job. Wow. And then you can flip in and out of that split. In reality, all that happens when they tried to do that is they fractured the person and they made them non-functional. And it's not necessary, the the, the process, it it doesn't matter. Like it's, that's a whole other, a whole other subject. But it didn't work. It, It doesn't, it did and it didn't. So in some cases it did work and in some it didn't and they couldn't, they couldn't figure out why. So it's like a misunderstanding of how the human mind operates. I refined it. And so what I wanted to do is to make sure that people could do it and then go home and be normal. So you d- instead of through trauma creating a split, you do it through conditioning. So you have an alternative character, an alternative mode you go into for violence. The guys who are good at violence do this automatically. So your, your average Navy SEAL, mm-hmm. when he's, because um, their, their training is deliberately traumatic to create this softened ego boundary state, whether you pass the Navy SEALs or you don't, or you get into Special Forces or don't, or you get into the Royal Marines or don't, it's can you create this split in the perso- in the personality that can do the very bad thing. And still come home and, and be the still very same person. And be very same person. And how successful is that? Because we see a lot of PTSD. You don't come home as the same person. It's and, not. And really it's not. not. So, wow. so if I say to you, one of the drills would be like, um, say in the face of violence, you tend to freeze. Uh, this is this is a horrible. <laughs> like this is great. This is just awful what I did. But I was I was young and I didn't understand what I was putting out there. Of course, of course. So one of the drills is you put somebody into a hypnotic state, and um, you have them experience subjectively what it would be like only to inflict violence on another person at the most barbaric level. So you'd have them graphically imagining doing awful things to another human being to desensitize them to the to the taboo of violence because we have intraspecies violence as a taboo uh, for most animals. So if you see like um, chimps fighting for dominance, usually if you're in the same troop, you don't kill the other beta who's trying to become an alpha. You wound him. It's because to kill him, he's a potential hunting mate. He could be my ally after we've had the dominance hierarchy. So there's battle. always some sort of evolutionary instinct yes. to keep your species alive. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So we try. I tried to remove it. <laughs> you tried to remove the evolutionary instinct to, to keep us all it. alive. Yeah, cool. I tr- and I, and so this was like people would willingly at home be listening to various hypnotic visualizations, where on a trigger word that they would say to themselves they would go into this very dark and violent split that was capable of doing the bad thing. But the mind doesn't work like that. It leaks. So then they would, uh, I'd be getting these emails going, oh, the course is great. I'm, I'm not freezing in situations. The violence is there. I'm ready to go. I had a few more arguments with my wife though. Interesting. Had some really nasty nightmares though. And it creates, 
So when we think about PTSD, we think of the soldier and we think of what was done to them. And yes, that creates PTSD. You're in frightening situations, dangerous situations. But the other side of PTSD that psychology doesn't like talking about because it's not comfortable is it's what that soldier knows they can now do to others and have in, a, in, a, in, a, in an alternate state of consciousness where they've done truly awful things. And that almost gives them probably the wrong word, but a confidence that they can do it and they are capable. It's like, it's like, it it's like a dark confidence plus the civilized part of your brain is going, did I do that? Jesus, did I do that and laugh? Did yeah. I do that? and feel the thrill of, of, of sadistic pleasure. Who am I? What am I? And that, so the warrior, the, the barbarian doesn't sit well with the guy who then has to drive his pickup truck to Walmart and get oat milk <laughs> and stand in a queue and, and just stand there waiting. Why the fuck? His whole body and his brain is going, cool, <laughs> take oat milk. Can they not stop me? <laughs> <laughs> and that's but, how you get these fragmented people who, yeah. Yeah. Sadly, you know. It's very, very difficult to reintegrate. It's not impossible, but to reintegrate these pieces. And then there's even an argument there to say, should we? And do you think the US government, I wouldn't say British government, but probably knew this stuff and they willingly still send soldiers out to do these things? No, when they, when they come back, they're probably not going to be the same. The US government, the British government doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. That, uh, and that and, and I, I say that, I'm judging them by their actions. Yeah. They have known that this happens. They've had little you know, um, symbolic gestures to try and mediate it. There's like pre-PTSD training so that you won't have as much PTSD afterwards, but they don't give a fuck. Yeah. Once you're a tool, you join the British military um, and your, or, or the American military, you are trained to be a weapon that, or, or a cog in a weapon yeah. because you might be on logistics, you might be in medical, you might be in whatever, but you're part of a weapon. And you're not a person anymore. And if the weapon isn't working or the cog isn't working, discard you. Yeah, off you, off you pop. Yeah. Now there's nice people inside of the American military and the British military. I, I'm in contact with, uh, with some of them, like uh, uh, a, a chap called Lieutenant Brian Brian Payne, who's um, a chaplain. Brian for the, Payne, that's a badass name. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? I yeah. love that. He's such a Lieutenant sweet guy. Lieutenant Payne. He's such oh, a man. Sweet, he's such a sweet guy <laughs> as well. He's a chaplain for uh, the the uh, the US Navy. But he deals with all forces, all forces PTSD. I play too much Warhammer. When I hear chaplain, that's not a good thing. <laughs> he's, he's not a, a good thing, people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the good, the good chaplain is out there doing his work. So g generally speaking, though, they, 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 don't, they don't particularly care. They don't particularly care and about that, what happens. That, that, that leads me, because, I mean, obviously, your knowledge on this stuff's amazing, and that's why we, we love chatting about it. Mm. Bodybuilding. What do you think? You've, we've spoke about this loads. But for everybody, what do you think of bodybuilding? A sport which, to me... It's artistically beautiful. I think mm. it's an incredible endeavor. It's a lifelong mm. commitment. Mm. You can't buy it. You can't cheat your way through it. Yeah. It's an art. Yeah. But how it's judged, the actual sport element, yeah. 10 men or 10 women get on a stage and then five people decide who is the best physique on that stage. Yeah. Purely out of opinion. What do you think about that for somebody? Somebody on the outside of it. Because yeah. um, I've, ne I've never had the impulse to want to wanna, to wanna compete. Um, and as I say, I enjoy this this kind of like this perpetual, uh, uh, Jung would call it the puer eternus. It means the eternal child. I enjoy being a dork and being like, oh, how many sets do you do? Why do we do this? Why? Yeah. I love all that. Because in martial arts, I have my, my orthodoxy, my dogma, my opinion. Yeah. And in this, I'm not an expert. Because I think so we like, found... Oh, I do a bit of martial arts and I have yeah. that view about martial arts. Yeah. I'm just like, oh yeah, this is fun. Like I yeah. couldn't give it, I couldn't care. Yeah. But bodybuilding to me was and kind of is, was, that yeah. was my. <laughs> this is my thing. Yeah. You Don't. said my calves are small. <laughs> Violence. It's the only outcome. It's the only outcome. We found Tyler's trigger. <laughs> Mate, you've got small calves. <laughs> I've, I've said to people before, the stuff I was doing when I was in really good shape when I was a lot younger was just mm. ill. Yeah. You know? And yeah. I want to know from you, like what, whether someone has historic issues and mental health yeah. problems or whether someone's just a normal person. Yeah. How do you, what do you think about bodybuilding as a competitive sport where there's no, it's not like powerlifting where, okay, I lift 500 kilo. I am the strongest man. Mm -hmm. Factually. Mm -hmm. What do you think about sport in which people get involved, train for 12 weeks? They're only, they're all, the only way they can measure their progress is their look. Mm -hmm. How does that influence somebody? What do you think about that? I think essentially, to be perfectly honest with you, I think, Bodybuilding is a poison chalice. Um, you're sipping poison. Doesn't mean you're going to get sick. It doesn't mean you're not going to survive it. 
But I would also say, if you do get sick and you don't survive it, don't be surprised. There are things inside of the human mind that shouldn't be dabbled with. And I would say, therefore, oddly enough, to the individual, bodybuilding is a far more dangerous pastime than martial arts. Even if you're doing like reality-based or what's that Muay Thai style where they where they use headbutts uh, and they just have ropes on their hands. Oh, I can't remember what it is, but it's extremely dangerous. It's extremely dangerous. Um, can you look that up? Muay Thai, but with headbutts. Oh, God, it's going to drive him mad. Muay Thai is bad enough, by the way. Muay Thai is bad know. enough. But that bodybuilding uh, part, if you're going to compete, um, I think one of the things that you're sort of alluding to is with powerlifting, you'd say, this is the cutoff point. When I lift two times my body weight for 10 beautiful reps, um, that's enough. Bodybuilding is infinite. It's mm -hmm. infinite. And you either lifted the weight or you didn't. Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you either got caught in the submission and tapped or you didn't. It's yeah. done. It's uh, done. Maybe you had a bad day. Maybe you should have eaten more. But okay, fine. But it's done. Bodybuilding's never done. Bodybuilding's never over. And I think I told you when I was last with uh, Aunt Bales a couple of weeks ago, and I was zoned out after training and I was watching Jay Cutler on the screen. Yeah, yeah. This is a bodybuilding gym that just shows uh, huge dudes on the screen. I started to go into that trance and I was like, fucking hell, that looks amazing. Yeah. Fucking hell. And then and then I was like, wow, that's so good. And then I thought about the shape I was in and I was like, thought, I was like, fuck, I thought I'd made gains. <laughs> I'm shit. I'm a worm compared to, and then, and, and then I was like, stop, stop, stop it. <laughs> You'll find, and I, I've, I've coached 11 years and, and I've got good friends in the industry who we always share little stories. Yeah. And you will find most people who come to, it's been a while for me, but people I know, mm. they'll, they'll go to people I know and go, hi, mate, I'm interested in some coaching. Here's mm. some pictures of me and, not taking anything away from them, just look like a normal guy. Yeah. Bit of a belly, but they look yeah. like a normal guy. They've yeah. been in the gym a little bit. They want to get ripped. And then he'll say, and here's, here's roughly an idea of what I want to look like. And they'll send a fucking picture of The Rock or they'll send a picture of Jay Cutler or a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger in 74. So first of all, we're going to kill you and then you need to reincarnate. <laughs> That's what- <laughs> As it, another human with different DNA. It is like saying, going to a footy coach and yeah. going- I am eight. I, I, roughly, I just want to play a bit like Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> I, just roughly. Just a bit. And I've not played before, and I'm not that, but I want to roughly just play like him, please. The, the, the upside of that kind of uh, naivety, I would, I would suggest, is if they got even a quarter of a way there, they would be ecstatic with their gains. Do you think, really? Yeah, I don't. I, I think, so. so I'd say this to you as a competitive bodybuilder, Anybody who's competed, whether it's like at the fitness level or I know there's different ways of competing in bodybuilding, yeah. um, you're not looking at human bodies the way the rest of us are. Yeah. And by you're, the rest of us, you probably mean, because I haven't put a number on it, but 99% of the, 99, maybe 99.5%. 99.5. Well, most people are not competing in bodybuilding. I mean, you're talking about <laughs> basically the rest of humanity. Yeah. You're, and I mean this, like, I'm going to say it carefully. I think doing what you've done you've broken your brains a little bit mm. because I saw like, so, so I used to train with Gary Sandland in Birkenhead um, and it was Mike, Mike Ahern's gym. Do you remember yeah, Warrior remember Mike, yeah, yeah. Gladiator? Um, and they were both in there. And at one point they changed the formation. At one point it was the martial arts side and the bodybuilding side. And they had to, they had to move the martial arts yeah. side across the alley because of the- I can only of, imagine what that was like in Price Street. But it was nice for me to live that experience as a young man and be like, wow, there's this real snarly divide. Because for me, growing up, I was like, uh, into like the ancient Greeks. They said, this is the gymnasium. Yeah. Over here, poetry. Over there, weights. Over there, <laughs> wrestling. We are yeah. all engaged in manly. That wasn't, well, nah. That, that was a big inspiration of mine. Eugene Sandow, yeah. it started with. Yeah. Larry Scott, it started with. And you yeah. can Google these people. They look great. They yeah. look moderately normal. Most normal yeah. men of God want to look like that. Yes. But the problem is, like you said, you start then looking at Arnold and going, okay, yeah. now that looks good. Yes. And then you look at yourself. Yes. And there's never going to be a comparison. And also, a massive one for us to talk about, the anabolic side. Like yeah. you used anabolics in the door work to make yourself bigger and I guess, you know, less likely to be targeted by these idiots. Yeah. Bodybuilding, I competed natural and one show's natural. But if you want to look like the idols in that field, there is no way on this planet anyone can look like a professional bodybuilder without serious anabolic use. Serious. 
And that's a huge implication as well. So I have a question for you. Um, are you in the camp that believes uh, that steroids are not magical, but very, very powerful in terms of aesthetics? Yeah. You are? Yeah. Okay. I, now it's a, it's, a, it's a split answer. Okay. I believe that steroids are extremely powerful. They're going to yeah. do a lot for you. They're going to build a ton of muscle, shred a lot of fat, yeah. make you a machine, strengthen your tendons, bones. But you do need to work at a very high level if you want to look like some of the best. And that's where the distinction comes in. Like a lot of people think the difference between them sat on the couch mm. and Arnold Schwarzenegger is that they don't want to do steroids. Mm. And that's further, it couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah. But that's not saying that steroids don't do incredibly magical things. And my, that's the problem. That's, that's, that's what, that's, that's where I'm at is like, cause in my experience, what happened when I told you the story where I was on the door and then eight weeks later, <clears throat> everybody's walking up to you going, what the fuck have you done? Yeah. <laughs> it was test D ball. For three weeks of those eight weeks, I was on holiday in Spain and all I could do was shrug uh, two kilogram um, water containers and do push-ups. That's it. There's a famous story and I hate telling it, but I, I try and be open with bodybuilding. I really do because of what it kind of did to me in a way. Mm. Ronnie Coleman was well known, obviously being one of the best bodybuilders of all time, but he wasn't always the best. Ronnie actually lost most of his first shows. A lot of people don't know that. He lost for about 10 years before he ever started winning. And Ronnie, I think, had a conversation. I'm not going to name the bodybuilder, but he had a conversation with a winning bodybuilder at the time. And they said, Ronnie, go and take some Anadrol, mm. five a day, which is 250 milligram. Anyone who knows what Anadrol is knows that's suicidal. Mm -hmm. Don't train for six weeks and come back. And apparently he did that and gained 40 pounds. And that's where he really started going, okay. I started finding himself. Because the thing is with bodybuilding, I was a good natural bodybuilder. Mm. Check me pictures. A lot of people actually say they prefer me natural. I was a great natural bodybuilder. Mm. But it's the only next logical step. Yeah. Like you said, it's infinite. And my yeah. idols are already beyond the horizon. Yeah. So you have to get involved. So so coming back to the the earlier point, when I look at pictures of you natural and not natural, um, I don't see, I haven't trained <laughs> my mind to see the difference. That must be the craziest thing for us just to hear people say yeah. that and go, really? Because I remember I used to, everyone who knows me knows I used to wear hoodies and, mm. and joggers and I'd mm. never get my body out. I mm. trained for probably seven years without anyone seeing my arms, mm. only on pictures on Instagram where I'd leak them yeah. and have this weird persona because I was yeah. an idiot. <laughs> and it was all because, it wasn't because I was cool or I was a shadow like mm. I thought I was. It was because I was terrified of people not thinking I was good enough. And right. most people would just say, we're not even fucking looking. Yeah. Like most bodybuilders, I'll tell you now, we judge every man or woman, yeah. maybe not women, sorry. Women probably judge other women, but we mm. look at other men's physiques. Yeah. Go, oh, what's he got going on? Yeah. Whereas most men don't give a shit, do they? Not, not really. <laughs> and, and I don't want to. So, so back to Fitness 2000 in Birkenhead, there was magazines all over the table and there would be bodybuilding and then there'd be like Martial Arts Illustrated and Terry O'Neill's Fighting Arts. And I'd just read the, every single page of everything in, in every martial arts magazine. I'd look at the bodybuilding and be like, men's legs, men's chests. Massive muscly biceps, massive yeah. veiny forehead. I'm like, who's reading this? But I, I was 18 at that time and I thought, what would happen to me if I kept looking at this? What's going to happen to my mind if I keep looking at these pictures? And then I look at myself and I go, what, yeah. I, what's, the, what's the difference between me and that? And if it's vast and that's good and this is bad, then I'll be bad. Do you think... It's because this is exactly the experience I had. And to summarize, we've established that we like martial arts and, mm. and other sports because mm. there's a tangible goal. Mm. With martial arts, I beat you up, I win. Yeah. You know, I get enough points and hit you more times than you hit me, I yeah. win. Powerlifting, I lift more than you, I win. Mm. Olympics, I run faster than you, I mm. win. In mm. bodybuilding, I look better than you, which is a completely objective thing. What, what's that even mean? Yeah. And I win. Yeah. That's where our issue kind of lies. And then I wanted to go into saying that, do you think... That's where the problem is. People desensitize themselves to what a man should look like because that's what happened to me. And do you think that problem exists because let's say I like F1 and I watch Lewis Hamilton race and mm. I'm like, wow, Lewis Hamilton's amazing. I don't have an F1 car mm. and I'm never going to sit in one and I don't have a track. Yeah. Do you think that's why I don't draw the comparison? But we all have a body. So immediately I'm like, why don't I have? That's an, that's you know, an interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, those things that, because other sports seem a lot healthier to follow. Football, although it depressed me when I was a fan. Yes. You, just no one in the crowd saying, I'm going to get down there, right? No, no. And I do wonder if there are bodybuilding fans who don't lift at all and genuinely follow everything that goes, maybe there are. They, they usually have the more sexualized 
fandom. <laughs> if I have to be honest, I have to be honest when I come on these. That's me. The you, I mean, Just I'll be honest see men with you. In trunks. I had priests, <laughs> I, and this is a promise, and mm. I'm, I don't talk about my religion a lot, but I'm not mm. against religion, but I've had priests when I was 17, 18 years old mm. reaching out to me about my bodybuilding, and I spoke to them. What were they saying? Just asking me about progress and how it was getting on. And I only looked back at 27 yeah, and yeah. went, hang on a Hang on a minute. second, yeah. That's, you didn't care about my progress. For the glory of God, your delts are beautiful, my son. Honestly, I, I've had a priest, I remember. He, Would you like me to bless your packs? I swear to you. And he would, but he trained to be fit in his defense. He did yeah, lift. Yeah. But like that, that is, that's yeah, part yeah. of it as well. Yeah. But that was what I'd love to know from him. Is, is that the problem with body us, bodybuilding? Because there, is there any equivalent sport? If it's a, it's on a sport, but is there an equal? No, there isn't. And and now you, you've actually, I didn't think about this, but you're hundred percent right. Um, it is. So kickboxing, uh, that's the kick I did. That's the knee I did. By the time, if I'd stopped training for three years, I'm not going to be able to kick that high yeah. or knee like that. Bodybuilding is you. And how do you divide you from your body? That's much harder than me saying, well, I haven't done boxing for five years. I'm a bit shit. Yeah. Everybody is. But but you are you are your body in a certain philosophical sense. Your body yeah. is you and you are your body. It's not your skill. It's not your F1 driving. It's not your foot. It's literally you. So there's a, I hadn't thought about that. There's an immediacy to it. This is, you're judging me. Yeah. Not the machine I've built over there for robot wars or whatever, or, or the car or whatever, <laughs> me, literally my body. And I, I think that's why I always kind of shied away from it when people would be like, I'd say almost as a joke to my bodybuilding mates, I don't know what you're looking at. And then they try and tell me, and yeah. I'm not stupid. I understand that I'm like, I don't, I don't want to know. Yeah. I don't want to see the difference between a six pack and an eight pack. Oh, there's veins I mean, in the, it. I don't, it like, goes way deeper. Like how yeah. is this six pack put together? Is it symmetrical? Is it not? Are their yeah. pecs full? Are they not? And I think that's, I mean, I'm obviously I've been about, I've literally been diehard and I, yeah. I have to still identify as one in a way, although I'm not really anymore. But like, that's what I really wanted to answer is why do we all, because I've got, honestly, I've got mates that I, and I love them. Like they're mm. really good friends of mine and they will send me pictures and I'll tell them this. Mm. And they will go, what do you think of me on this one, mate? And I'm like, mm. mate, you look like fucking the Hulk. Yeah. With a better waistline. Yeah. Like you genuinely look fake. Yeah. And he's like, I just don't see it. And I'm and I'm telling you now, these if I I wouldn't put a picture up or anything, but if I showed mm. you these people, you'd be blown away. Yeah. And I always said bodybuilding was self hate to motivate because that's the only way. <laughs> oh Jesus. That's, that's the only way. <laughs> Arnold cut the legs off his pants. Yeah. Because he wanted to expose his weak calf so that he forced himself to make them grow. I will humiliate trend. myself yeah. every day. <laughs> if that's not self-hate to motivate. <laughs> Laugh with my calves, please. Yeah, that's what that's what, that's what was happening. And Arnold, and for everyone watching, a lot of the greatest bodybuilders, in my opinion, got out of it very fast. So if you look yeah. at Arnold, bailed it by about 29. Yeah. You know, we got off straight into movies. I think he, re I would love, I was meant to meet him, but I'm not anymore. Mm. And that's probably what I, what I would have asked him. Mm. I know you love bodybuilding, Arnold, but is, did you get out because you knew yeah. that it was unsustainable? Because after the age of probably 35, yeah. you're asking a lot out of yourself to be taking grams of anabolics, eating thousands of calories and living an existence like that. So I think he kind of sussed it and that's one of my theories anyway, but. I mean, I, I just, I just at, at a certain point. So what, what I would say in defense of bodybuilding, in defense of bodybuilding, a human being should care what their body looks like. Yeah. What your body looks like is actually a marker of health. I don't give a shit yeah. what. People say like, you're fit at any size, you're healthy at any size, you're not. Yeah. Um, so you should be invested. But then, like I said about the door work where you have to control your own ego, you have to control your own ego here. It's very easy for body dysmorphia and for malignant superego injunctions to start stepping in. Because if you have a malignant superego injunction, it will be perfectionist. And it is going to compare you to Jay Cutler. And once you get to Jay Cutler's size, you're going to be like, yeah, but he was always... His shoulders are always bigger than his quads or something. Yeah. There's, that's a vortex that's never ending. So you at your best, that's what I want to ask you, when you can look at pictures of you at your best, do your eyes automatically go to the best parts of your body or the weaknesses that still remain? Always the weaknesses. And this is why I don't know if the invention of social media has further perpetuated the damage that it's causing, mm. but you shouldn't really be able to see images of other humans in their best moment. I no. think that's very dangerous Yeah, and it's only really bodybuilding. And again, there are other things like, you know, you can sit in front of a bunch of Ferraris and go, mm. you know, 
for me loads of money. And that's probably another part of this in another mm. conversation. With bodybuilding, if I put a picture up of my body, yeah. you're seeing 12 years of work, yeah. thousands of calories, thousands of hours in the gym. And I do love that. But then I know about bodybuilding too. Mm. Lighting is one of the biggest factors. Mm. Tan is one of the biggest factors. Mm. Pump will make it make your arm an inch bigger. Yeah, yeah. And you'd be blown away what these guys are doing mm. for that one image. Mm. And then you're looking at yourself going, fucking hell. You know, I'm not looking great here. And it's the comparison that I would love to solve because like I said, with F1 and football, I know loads of footy fans. Not mm. one of them goes, I'm going to be down there one day or no. they go and play. I know loads of people don't play Sunday league. No. Most footy fans don't, couldn't kick a ball. It's not part of the strategy of enjoyment of football. Yeah. Whereas I think bodybuilding, wow. If you want to go deep on it, there's always, it, it must all be motivated by envy. Or the or the or the majority of the interest and the involvement yeah. is envy based, which is the same fuel that drives the engine of social media. You would draw envy from social media, social media and this tomorrow. is kinda why I feel like I have almost an authority to talk on it because it leaks into the women and the influencers who aren't bodybuilders, but the yeah. girls that do Photoshop things and yeah. Because an image like that is extremely powerful because I always said this about bodybuilding. It was one of my biggest loves of bodybuilding. It was that we all have a body mm. and we can all be inspired. Mm. You know, we, we can all look at ourselves and go, oh, that's, I'm part of that sport. Whether I like it or not, I'm mm. involved. Um, but by that same notion, it's the same with social media. If someone posts yeah. up them kicking a football, I don't care, so I don't kick footballs. <laughs> but if someone posts a picture of their abs, I've got abs. I yeah. should have abs, shouldn't I? Yeah. So I'm yeah. immediately like, whoa. And that's how it invokes such a, a toxic reaction. Well, you could even argue that that, to use the the the, the woke leftist uh, language, that's a trigger. You're now triggered. Yeah. You technically, every human can technically be triggered because yeah. we all have bodies. Yes. In the same way, the beauty industry probably gets us all as well, you know, because we all have faces, but. You, and you, the, the thing is you do, most people have a degree of control over it. I think like. Once, this is why I said it's a poison chalice because of the envy that's 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 a key ingredient of bodybuilding. And I'm I'm not saying don't do bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, no, like, me neither. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I still go. Um, I enjoy it. But I was just thinking when you said about having a pump. Sometimes when I'm in the gym and I've done an hour and twenty minutes, I'm like, if I look like that <laughs> all the time, I'd be so much happier. The way you look with a pump, Mate. and I'm not in amazing shape, like I'm chubby, but it's funny. with a pump, you look. It's funny great. you say that because my mate Yanis, absolute amazing guy, and I first ever trained with this guy. Mm. He went to Oxford to study maths. He's a genius, and um, I remember him saying to me, and it never left me, Tyler. What you have when you have a pump? That's what you look like in six months if you keep going. Right. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then you, but then I got bigger because I met him when I was very skinny and yeah. I got bigger and then I went, oh, but now I get a pump and I look even bigger. Yeah. yeah. I want to look like that in six months. Yes, and yeah. then every time you get a pump and you get yeah. this taste of how good you could be. It's like the donkey uh, chasing a carrot on a stick that's attached <laughs> yeah. to its head, isn't it? Yeah. There's always going to be. Bodybuilding is that, is that yeah. metaphor. And, and I've got, I mean, the big question we, we do, we will finish on, which I'll get to in a bit was how people can do it you know, responsibly. So yeah. everyone watching, I don't I hate bodybuilding. I love bodybuilding. It's built me and made me who I am. Mm. I just want people to do it a little safer or be a bit more aware. And yeah. I do think before I got to that, I was going to say steroid use. I don't know about its connotations to the psychological states, but mm. that's probably where bodybuilding goes wrong. Because I think if steroids never existed, mm. we would all be natural. And I think then you would have the finite limit. Yes. Then you would have the ceiling. Yes. Like you said about deadlifting. You know, once you hit that 400 kilo, I'm max now. Yes. With naturals, and I trained natural for five years, so I know you probably will build 20 pounds in your first year, 10 in the next, five in the next, four in the next, three in the next, and that's you done. What age did you peak naturally? 20. I started anabolic steroids at 21. And is it, are there pictures of that on your, on your Instagram? Um, but what, when I started steroids or before? Right before you started steroids. Uh, where, would, where would people find a picture of, of, of that? Uh, on my Instagram, if you look at my show photographs. Yeah. Uh, pretty much 2014, 15, that's me. Can you can you pull that? Can you pull Tyler's Instagram up, please? Did you find out what the Muay Thai style is where they use headbots? Uh, is that ca card Chuek, is it? Is that it? Card, no, 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 that's not it. Do they put ropes around their hands so they can yes. hit each other with the rope? It's called le le oh, le le I want to say it's called Lethway. 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 That's a dangerous martial art. That, that screws people up. Well, yeah. I was going to talk to you about Bass Rutan. And oh, I watched yeah. a video about Bass and he was saying, you wouldn't punch someone in a street fight. You'd break your hands. You use your palms. And I was like, that's what people don't realize, do they, about MMA and stuff? Like, yeah. you can't punch people in the head. Yeah. You can't, you can't, 
You can't punch them. I mean, I've I've palmed and punched people, and all I could say is the bones in the hand, the phalanges are quite small and delicate. The for <laughs> intricate activities. You can actually type in oh, if you type in a uh, vacuum pose, I'll come up, and that's the shot I'd probably like to show people. Vacuum pose. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on a I'm on a wing here, bodybuilding. Yeah, because I'm on a I'm on a bit of a whim here because if it comes up on images, but it will be Tyler. It'll be just Tyler probably. There I am. Which one? That one there down. You don't even recognize me, do you? I can yeah, play down, a game down, here. Down, down again. Down and left. Left is me. Pull him up, make him large to the left. On the left. Not his bottom. The va- that one, that's me. Look at that little fella. How old are you, how old are you there? Oh, wow. Sadik Hadzovic has stole my uh, picture. Oh, that's no good. That's not me. <laughs> that's a fraudster. Go, go. And the other go, guy. Go, go I was back. 18 there, by the way. You're 18. Natural there. That, that that's is the image. an incredible shape to be in, naturally. Old school bodybuilding. Absolutely incredible. If you just right click on it and, um, and open... In new tab, it. yeah. In new tab, that should make it. No, I don't know why I, I'm a bit angry Sadik stole me picture, to be honest. He's well known, Where's, where's Sadik from? Is he Serbian? He's actually from New York, but obviously oh. must have yeah. Hadzovic. He must have some sort of roots in. Yeah, Yugoslavia. Um, yeah. Hads, Hadzovic. There's one on Reddit. That's usually where I, if you're telling just Tyler. How many years had you been training for when you were in that? Not many. Three. The size of your fucking biceps. I know. I was very good natural. That's the problem though. You get sucked in. Um, victory pose bodybuilding it was actually so I, sh- yeah. I shouldn't have said the size of your biceps that, that doesn't matter well, Tyler. the thing is your relationship with God is all that matters it is <laughs> I'm at peace with God now um, but that's the thing you, you get into it and if you didn't have you know these there I am like to me that was all I wanted to achieve man and that's probably why I kind of stopped doing it because I'm only 172 pounds there that's great and that's what I want to look like balanced as everything should be there's a, there's a guy I listen to called uh, uh, Jamie. He used to write a post called uh, a blog called Chaos and Pain, and he's very into the the pre steroid strongman yeah. era where they would do uh, not all, but a lot of them. They wanted to be athletic. They wanted to be flexible. They wanted to be capable and have a body to look good as well. That's Instead of it just part. being aesthetics, well, only focused. steroids made it aesthetics focused. I don't believe you can become dysfunctional as a bodybuilder without steroids. Can I be a fairly lazy slob and compete in bodybuilding as long as the nutrition is okay and uh, the steroids are high? Do you, you remember we've discussed this before. Could you be? Could you be a sort of a fairly slovenly person but still compete? You can do if you type in people who compete who shouldn't. <laughs> is, there, is that a thing? Oh yeah. I've been there and people have turned up who don't look like they've been in the gym. <laughs> oh yeah. People who do bodybuilding shows who show. You, there's no criteria. And this is what breaks my heart because the yeah. people who run the federations have never lifted a weight in their life. Really? These people just make money. They yeah. want, you know how much it is to compete in a bodybuilding show? No. You want to do the Arnold Classic thing, cost my mate 500 quid. Really? You're the body, you're the, you're the fucking show. And you, you pay? pay? Oh. If you're a pro bodybuilder, you pay every year membership for your pro card. And what does the pro, does the pro card get you? Uh, sponsorships? Gets you and, an Instagram name. Is, is that it? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It means it means you can compete in pro shows, and guess what? You pay for those. So, as far as the steroid side of things go, uh, do you think that that has? And obviously, you've got your hard work, your nutrition, your recovery plus steroids. Do you think we've entered a phase where people are relying more on chemicals than on the hard work and the recovery and nutrition? I think you have to, because if you're natural, like we've said, if you eat really well, train really hard and you're natural, you will mm. reach a peak within probably five to 10 years. Yeah. You might get a little better over long term, and that's yeah. called mature muscle or muscle maturity. Yeah. There's some incredible naturals, David Kay, Andrew Chappelle, Nathan Williams, all the American ones are a bit suspect, but they're the British ones. Yeah. And they were incredible. Uh, small guys in real life, I hate yeah. to say that to them, but they look incredible. But with natural bodybuilding, once you've done the nutrition and you've done the training and you've mm. done the sleeping, mm. add one miller test. Okay, now you add 20 pounds mm. and then you don't add any more. That's mm. it. You've had your two, add another miller test. Okay, now you've added another 10 pounds. Yeah. Add a miller trend. You've added 10. Add some growth hormone. Add some insulin. Yeah. Now you're 250 pounds. And, and like I was, 250 pounds. And I started speaking to people and they were like, oh yeah, but your bicep needs a little bit more peak. So let's test that synth all that. You know, and I was just like, for anyone who wants to know anything about me, I try and be as transparent as I can. And I hate talking about this, but I hate injections and I hate needles. And that's mm. probably what stopped me going down the bodybuilding path, if you want the truth. Really? I could do one injection a week and I would fill the thing up, mm. but I would never do more than that. And I hate needles. I don't you, hate them. You'd but fill I'd, it up with multiple with like compounds? like four mil or something like that, five mil. Um, two test, two mast or two test, two trend, one bold or something like that. Um, but, that's, but that was my limit. 
What was the ejection site like afterwards? All good. <laughs> <laughs> Sucked it in. Well, this is Your the body thing. just went, thanks very much for that. My body went, let's go, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing with me. And if you think that's a lot, oh man, that's no. nothing. That is nothing. I got people that do that a day. I know people that do that a day. And oh. that's for getting insulin. So if people want to know, let's give you a realistic yeah. bodybuilder. I, don't, I shouldn't be this ambassion bodybuilding basically, but I have to do this for my own mental health to remind me why I'm not doing it. Um, probably a three cc needle. Anyone knows what that looks like? Mm -hmm. You're doing that a day. A day? No, some people are doing that a day. Can your body even absorb and process that much? Sadly, it, it, it probably can, I guess. And that's just the hormones. You then have growth hormone every mm. day. Sometimes mm. people do it more than a night. You don't have insulin. Sometimes mm. people do it in the morning or they do it three times a day, depending mm. on the how many times you want to do it with the meal. You're already talking about 20 injections a week. And that's not synthol or hyaluronic acid, which is like muscle enhancers. Yeah. That's not all the supplements. That's not the CPAP machine. Yeah. People don't realize what goes into it. And I do admire it, but that's why I got put off because I started knowing something was wrong. I, yes, I've gone through a bit of, um, because obviously like in the last uh, three years, um, I've, I've just, I've, I've met more bodybuilders. Uh, through, I was traveling and then I came back to the world and having these conversations and I, I do admire it. Um, and the, 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 the discipline and the torture, it's just yeah. a different thing. There's not like one sport's harder than another sport. Yeah. MMA is very hard to train for. Yeah. Muay Thai is hard to train for. Bodybuilding is, if you like, speaking to somebody with a psychology background, if you yeah. go mad training for a bodybuilding show, I am this surprised. I'm not surprised at all. I was going to say, you know, a few of us now, mm. how many seem normal? Or capable of, or not damaged by what they've done, because I guess it's hard to say because we're friends. But yeah, I think it's very obvious sometimes, isn't it? Well, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to upset people who are into bodybuilding. What, what I've, what I saw from the outside of it was, it's kind of like martial arts. You've got like tough guys, and they're kind of probably compensating for childhood trauma or feeling. That's why I got into martial arts. That's why I got into door work. You yeah. know, I'm not saying, ah, oh, you. It's me. I'm on the inside yep. of that. And then when I met more bodybuilders, I was like, no, these aren't tough guys, actually. The, a lot of bodybuilding guys, powerlifting guys as well, when you get inside, there's this, um, you see like a sort of a, a they're, they're kind of quite, quite childlike and Body, quite, quite nerdy. Bodybuilders, and, are, I've got a lot of them as friends. Yeah. And they're, powerlifters. And yeah. they're the kindest people. Yeah, yeah. Because like you said, a lot of them are just damaged. Yeah. And they're looking for validation in others. And I can say I did that. So yeah. like I said, I'm not laughing at anybody. Yeah, I'm yeah. an example for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that kind of led me on to the question, and we've said this before, mm. in gyms, I'm not going to talk about women because mm. I, I don't know, I'm not a female, I don't understand it. But with men, do you think for most men going in the gym and training their ass off, mm. it's not just about, I want to look good for the girls or mm. I want to be in shape for health. Mm. Do you think a lot of it's some form of making up for something they feel like they're missing? I, I can't see how you could engage in something that is, is bodybuilding, which is essentially somatic. It's in your body and you're effectively saying, look at me, that couldn't be compensatory in nature because I don't know if you could, if you could, this is sort of Adlerian psychology, Adler, A-D-L-E-R for people who are interested. He came up with the idea of the inferiority complex. That's Adler. Oh, he, wow. was a, he was a peer of Freud, which is a, which is a fantastic concept. If you could achieve all your goals and objectives and you had potency in the world to do everything that you wanted to do without it, why would you go through it? Like what's, why would you go, what's the point? Aesthetics quite literally is the definition of what I guess you've just described. Isn't it is. It? It's, it's irrelevant. That. So when I was going for potential officer training um, and you're around, they're privileged guys, they're tough, but they're toffs, but they're tough toffs. Wow. And they're capable. And sometimes you'd meet people who are special forces. And sometimes when I was teaching self-defense, I met people who are special forces. These are not jacked dudes, but they're, they're everything that they want to do in life and achieve, the fitness, the, 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 whatever fitness they need, whatever relationship goals they have, whatever they're achieving without that. This is, yeah, this is good. So why do we need it? We need it to make up for something is, is roughly my point. So that, I mean, we both share that I love ancient Greece mm. and that's a huge inspiration for a lot of the brands I've had and mm. a lot of things and the culture of athleticism, mm. almost like Plato, Socrates. Mm. And what it leads me to mm. is they used to be able to box, run, yeah. throw a javelin. Like yeah. They did it all. Yeah. So now we're going on to the biggest question I have and the final question. And that is, 
because this is what I really care about mm. is helping people in this situation. Yeah. I don't want to stop anyone bodybuilding. I think it's amazing and it's beautiful. Yeah. But how do you think, and it's a hard question, people who are getting into something so opinion-based, mm. whether it's to themselves or through competition, how, how should they structure their mind? How should they think? Is there anything they should be doing daily, like practices, like maybe, I know for me, you know, looking at, you know, having things you say to yourself, talking to yourself with, with self-love mm. and is there anything that they should do? Philosophically, generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of stoicism, but I do think stoicism is the underpinning of cognitive behavioral therapy. I do think stoicism does offer something here, which is you've got to start with the end in mind and you have to ask yourself, why am I doing this? When I said it's a poison chalice, I wasn't saying don't do it. I'm doing it. I'm drinking from the poison chalice. When I drink cider or a gin and tonic, that's a poison. Yeah. You can enjoy it, but if it takes over your life, you're going to have problems. So as the Stoic philosophy would say, is you've got to find the cutoff point and then guard it as though your life depends on it because it does. You can die from doing this sport. We we know people who fucking killed themselves. Yeah. And I would even go a little further to say the dysmorphia can kill who you are. Even if Absolutely. it doesn't kill your physical person. It kill you, yeah. It's killing you and who you are and the relationships you have and the things that you seek. Do you, do you remember I told you there was a lad in Liverpool I used to work at the door with? Tony, his name was. And he survived the shooting at the 05 one and it, they shot him in the face and shot through his finger, blew his finger off. Wow. He turned around and he, and I think he took a bullet in, uh, in his glutes as well. He survived the shooting. Seven years later, he didn't survive bodybuilding. Just jamming insulin, did too much, yeah. collapsed, went into a coma. Nobody found him in time and he died. And he was 35, 36. So guard that cutoff point. I don't think anybody should be sat there looking for hours and hours of pictures of men and then comparing themselves to, or pictures of women if you're a woman and comparing yourself to that. That can't be healthy. Compare yourself to where you were. I know it sounds trite. No, I like that, yeah. I know it sounds trite, but I can make myself feel like shit. Or I can go and look at when I did 75 hard in 2019 and my progress picture's there, <laughs> and I can look at the fucking state, the Homer Simpson state, narrow shoulders and breasts. And then I'm like, well, I'll, I'll, at least I look like a fucking train now. Yeah. I don't look like Jay Cutler. Uh, boo fucking who. Yeah. Have a sense of humor. Talk to yourself in a way that's reasonable and go, but I'm in a healthier state than I was, and I look better than I was, and I love the gym. I love training with you and Danny. Yeah, yeah. It's a real pleasure. Why poison that pleasure with this pervert? It's a perversion. And I don't mean it necessarily a sexual perversion, but a perversion of the will. Go and enjoy your training and enjoy getting yourself into good shape by your standards, not other people's standards. So it's standards. very important to understand the you versus you concept. 100%. Because for me, that's what did it for me. Yeah. I can only look at me because I am the only me. Yes. And the second that you draw inspiration from, I mean, I love Kevin Lavrone and Flex Wheeler. I'd look yeah. like them tomorrow, Yeah, but I'm never going to. Right. And how, what's the best way to do that? How, how do you compare yourself with yourself? What, what Would you set markers up with photographs? Would you, you can, maybe? Yeah, you can do. You can do. I mean, even that, you, 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 you're dancing with body dysmorphia. You're yeah, tickling, so you can, you're you tickling can see it coming dysmorphia. out of me there. It's like, yeah. I want photos. Yeah. And, and I do think it's like this thing with like counting calories. I, do, I don't, I'm, I'm not a fitness trainer, but I do think everybody should have lived a period of their life where they count calories. Yeah. And it should be longer than three months because it burns into your consciousness how much you're eating. Everybody should have done like 75 hard. Uh, I don't work for them, but like I got good results on that because of the consistency. Yeah. You have 75 days of taking pictures and you and and you de you develop the new belief. You go, fucking I had tits there. And literally like there's a, there's a period in 2019 in 30 days, it was almost like somebody had come along and fucking, uh, what's it called? Where you vacuum it out. What's that process? Gynecomastia surgery or liposuction. Lipo. <laughs> I was like, it looks like lipo because it's like under my tit there was fat. And then and then, 30 days of consistency, it's gone. And I have that in my mind now and that's healthy. And I that's guess a what's good really cool know. about that is you've just explained to us, you did a picture every day. Yeah. You didn't have fucking time to go and type in six pack abs or blonde guy with six pack, you know, it's like, you've looked at you yeah, and you are the target and yeah. you are, because I think that is what, would you say daily then you want to be making sure you're talking to yourself with some respect? Like, I mean, yeah. I know for me, it was like, you look shit. This is shit. This Can't is shit. Have that. That, that's a negative. That's really bad for you. Yeah. Yeah. And then the same goes for just comparing yourself with yourself. Compare yourself with yourself, set the limits, set, set the goals, set the targets. 
do it with a sense of humour and self-love. Like, I was whinging to you via voice messages the other day. My back is pinged and then my back gets better and my fucking knee pings. You've got to have a sense of humour about this. We're limited beings. We have only so much time on the planet. Do you want to invest in something? Go and speak to the competitive bodybuilders. They'll tell you. Ruins relationships if you let it. Ruins mental health if you let it. Steroid usage in a certain percentage of men literally induces psychosis. That's the published literature. Trembolone seems to induce psychosis in all of us. <laughs> and if you're if you're stuck on that body dysmorphic state of I want to look like this, I want to look like this, imagine taking the brakes off with trend. Yeah. And how crazy you can get. And my personal opinion to add on to that, the daily gratitude, the you versus you approach, the yeah. self-love, because that stuff is vital. Yeah. My add-on to that, and this is something I do firmly believe. I love bodybuilding. Mm. I think it's one of the best endeavors. However, if you are not good at it mm. and you do not show promise, mm. I don't think you should take anabolic steroids. Of course, you can do what you want with your body. I've got friends that say the same thing. It's your life, but I don't think you should bother. Unless you're very gifted where you might get a financial or monetary reward, it is not worth your time. I I regret falling in love with it as late as it did. I would love to live the experience that you did of seeing how far I could have got with nothing. Yeah. And just taking it to the absolute plateau and just loving the challenge. Because I'm seeing kids on TikTok plateau. and it's never always been like this. Like when yeah. I got into it, it wasn't like this. Kids yeah. on TikTok going, I'm on, this is what happens with Trent. And then they've got a sick tune in the background. I wish I could edit like them. They've got <laughs> a sick tune in the background. They bounce. And I'm thinking, I look better than you natural. And I I promise myself, like I know that. Yeah, yeah. So you are definitely doing this for no reason. Yeah. My personal belief is you can look incredible. You can box, you can skip, you can run, you can mm. swim, you can climb. And you can have all those things. Yeah. Unless you are gifted or at least very good at bodybuilding as a natural individual, mm. I do not think you should take steroids for no. aesthetic gain. No. It's different for sports and all that. You want to take growth hormone and be a fighter? That's normal. Yeah. But if you're going to take testosterone, trembolone, mastron, boldenone, anavar, mm. anadrol, purely so you look better in the eyes of other individuals, I recommend you don't. Yeah, it's a shame to do that. It's it definitely is. a shame to do that. So I really appreciate that, man. And I love the insights actually into the martial arts and all that as well. Because I'll go into that IMK Ultra thing. I'm going straight home to Google. Yeah. Richard Grannon, most wanted list yeah, yeah. in America. Um, but yeah, that how, was awesome. How to, how to radicalize people. I, I mean, I, I should just also say, like, I, I do think martial arts in a similar way is also a poison chalice. Uh, I don't think anybody is untouched because there's neurosis in yeah. there as well. There's like guys who are compensating. They want to fight with other men. Yeah. They're not in touch with their own masculinity. They feel threatened easily. They learn Muay Thai as a competence. It's the same psychological structure. It is structure. always the fighters saying stuff to me like, or uh, well, not me, but I see the, the videos on Instagram mm. and it's like, yeah, you might be big, but I can fight. And I'm thinking, we're just lifting to look good, mate. We don't want to fight with you. I'm not fighting with anybody. We just want to have big arms, mate. That's it. I, I, we're not trying to look tough, you know, because they're angry that we look like the Street Fighter character that they used yes. to play as a kid. Yeah, that's it. But that's um, it. I think the point here is bodybuilding isn't the only poison chalice. Yeah. We all sip from them every single day. 100%. Sugar, alcohol. Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> so t- it's reality TV. We're all sipping from a poison chalice, but just try to take little sips. Yeah. You know, that yeah. would probably be the, the best advice. 100%. 100%. But where can people find you, Rich? What can, where can they do to get in touch with you and watch your um, amazing I'm, podcast? I'm active on on Instagram. Uh, it's richard.grannon, or if you just put Richard Grannon into YouTube, I've, I've colonized it. I'm everywhere. Yeah, he's, he's, you'll find him. You won't be like me on Google. You'll find this guy. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's amazing. Thank you very much, man. Thank you, mate.